Welcome to RTV's Israel Daily. I'm Amit Harari and coming up in today's newscast. Israel, the Air Force swiftly responding as Syrian missiles sends shockwaves through the night. Meantime, Israel warning of forceful evacuation as tensions rise with Hezbollah. And finally, Israel's youth soccer team making history, qualifying for Euro Championship semi-finals and one step closer to Olympic Games. Syrian anti-aircraft missile entered Israeli airspace overnight, prompting an Israeli airstrike on the Syrian battery that fired the missile. The missile caused a loud sonic boom heard over much over Israel before breaking up, with Repnel falling harmlessly near the southern town of Rahat. And Altavi Steve Leibovich reports. The sonic boom caused by the Syrian missile fired erroneously toward Israel could be heard in much of the country. The missile broke up over Israeli airspace with shrapnel landing a few hundred kilometers away, near the southern Israeli town of Rahat. The Air Force responded to the intrusion, sending aircraft to take out the Syrian anti-aircraft missile battery near the city of Homs. Residents of central and southern Israel reported hearing the large blast and shrapnel of what appeared to be parts of a surface-to-air missile from a Russian-made S-200 system hit the ground. The nose crashed into the side of a building, causing slight damage, and the tail landed in an open field. Firefighters and police forces were called to the scene. Though uncommon, Syrian surface-to-air missiles fired at Israeli jets in the past have ended up inside Israel. In two separate incidents in 2021, shrapnel from missiles landed in Tel Aviv and Ashalim. In 2019, a missile fired at an Israeli jet crashed in northern Cyprus. The Hezbollah terrorists are still refusing to remove two of the tiny tent outposts set up on the Israeli side of the Blue Line border in demarcation with Lebanon. Israel has tried diplomacy pressuring UNIFIL and European capitals to remove the infiltrators voluntarily. The IDF is warning of force and Altavis William Sharon has more. Israel is intensifying warnings that unless Hezbollah evacuates the tiny enclave on Har Dov, the IDF will take initiative to evacuate them by force. The area in question is called Mount Dov in Israel and called Shaba Farms in Lebanon. The area was part of the Syrian Golan Heights before the Six-Day War and had Israeli law extended it along with the rest of the Golan Heights in 1981 and lies adjacent to the Lebanese border. Two weeks of mediation by the United Nations Interim Force in Lebanon and European capitals in contact with Hezbollah in Lebanon have failed to convince Hezbollah to dismantle the two tents manned by its armed men. Minister Israel Katz today tweeted that Israel prefers diplomacy to force and does not want to spark an armed confrontation on the northern border. The IDF stated earlier that Hezbollah post was not a threat to national security where there is no border fence and the frontier is marked by rocks and barrels. And joining us now on the situation and constant threat on our northern border is JISS research fellow and military strategy expert Colonel Reserves Professor Gabi Siboni. Gabi, a sonic Hi. boom, hello, a sonic boom yes. over Israel caused by a Syrian anti aircraft missile straying way over the border and reaching sudden Israel where it crashed in pieces harmlessly. Do we know what this was, an intentional or um, maybe serious part? I, I, maybe, maybe the, the officials know. I, I don't know if it was intentional or a mistake. But anyway, Israel cannot tolerate uh, such uh, such a missile uh, launch, and uh, this was uh, a long year um, IDF's policy uh, to uh, counter back, to hit back any uh, uh, anti-plane uh, uh, missile battery that is uh, launching uh, missiles against uh, Israeli uh, Air Force uh, planes or um, anyway, launching missiles. Maybe it was launch, uh, launch, launch in purpose if uh, the, the, the radars have uh, spotted something, I don't know. But anyway, this is a long year uh, Israeli policy. Now, Israel has acknowledged repeatedly hitting military targets in Syria to prevent uh, the entrenchment of pro-Iranian hostile elements. Is it inevitable that some S-200 Russian anti-aircraft fired at Israeli planes will um, hit Israel, actually? 
Well, uh, it may happen. It has happened. And uh, uh, I think that they launch uh, anti-aircraft missiles all the time, and they, they do it uh, on a regular basis. And, uh, and as a result, uh, the IDF uh, takes back uh, those batteries. I think it, it, is, it happens all the time, and uh, only now, because it uh, was, uh, um, you know, uh, went all over uh, along Israel and uh, uh, landed uh, down back south to Rat. Uh, that was uh, published and that we see. Turning toward uh, Hezbollah and its tense on Hardov, Israel has been very patient to find a diplomatic solution to get them to leave Israeli territory. Is our patience running thin? What's the story there? Well, I think that this is a typical mistake that um, I, I regret to say the IDF, uh, uh, you know, low-level commanders have uh, created because uh, this kind of situation has to, uh, had, had to be uh, treated by the local uh, local force and would not be you know escalated to the brigade commander to the northern command to the chief of the IDF and now to the government and everybody deals with it what uh, as we say what we, we did not deal when it was small now we have to deal with it's very big and everybody is focused on their own uh, um, uh, you know, agenda and Hezbollah will not, uh, well, nobody can imagine that Hezbollah will decide to, to draw back from those tents. Uh, if it would have uh, been dealt uh, with uh, immediately, we wouldn't be sitting in the situation. However, uh, we cannot tolerate, uh, Israel cannot tolerate such an activity and will have to, uh, will have to respond. Uh, as I understand, diplomatic uh, measures will not uh, be effective because Hezbollah has no way to go back. It's uh, against their uh, honor, then you know, whatever. And uh, uh, thus, uh, Israel will have to uh, respond by force. Why is Israel, you're saying, responding by force? Why is Israel so patient, so careful on that really tense border right now? Well, as I told you, uh, if, if uh, things were, were not, uh, they were not dealt uh, uh, immediately, now, uh, you know, we have to. Uh, to run through all the diplomatic measures and to try to uh, to find ways to uh, convince the international community that we did all that we could uh, to uh, to uh, to to convince Hezbollah to draw back from from those uh, this little post. Uh, having done that, uh, hopefully uh, we will have the gained the legitimacy to uh, deploy force. Yes, now, Gabi, some would say that Israel has been too patient and the moment Hezbollah crossed the line, they should have been immediately forced to leave one way or another. They're terrorists and it's an obvious provocation. So why is Israel playing, again, as you said, waiting games yes, with them? Yes, but I mean, uh, what's... Uh, this is, yeah, you're right, you're absolutely right. But this is, uh, this is uh, the problem of our uh, um, junior commanders, which did not react immediately. Once you do not react, you escalate it to your commander. Every time you escalate a, a problem, an operational problem, not only this tense, but any operational problem, every time you do not deal with that and you escalate it to your commander, it's a failure. You should not do it. You should not escalate problems to your commanders. And you should do whatever it needs to do to you understand the, the interest. Every as an officer understands the, the issue. And once uh, uh, they escalate it and each commander continue to escalate it, to uh, the second, uh, the higher level, uh, it creates a, a, a bigger problem. This is the problem. So now we are facing a failure of the junior commanders of, our, of the IDF. This is the situation. And I, I regret to say this, but this is our situation. We have to hope, as always, for peaceful times on this border. Professor Gabi Siboni, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Former U.S. Ambassador to Israel, Daniel Shapiro, chose as an envoy for the Abraham Accords, highlights the push for regional integration and peace in the Middle East. His appointment as a senior advisor emphasizes the need for passing the Abraham Accords envoy bill to ensure steady advancement toward lasting peace and normalized relations. Former U.S. Ambassador to Israel Daniel Shapiro has been chosen as the envoy for the Abraham Accords, as announced by U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken. This appointment is currently progressing through the U.S. Congress, having already gained approval from the House of Representatives earlier this month. Shapiro's responsibilities will include supporting U.S. initiatives to promote a more interconnected and peaceful region, strengthening and expanding the Abraham Accords, and establishing the Negev Forum. 
Shapiro previously served as ambassador to Israel from 2011 to 2017 during President Barack Obama's administration, and he was succeeded by David Friedman, lawyer and close associate of former President Donald Trump. Shapiro also advised the Biden administration on matters concerning Iran. His new task involves enhancing various aspects of the Abraham Accords, particularly the Negev Forum, which aims to foster joint regional projects among Israel, Egypt, Jordan, Morocco, the UAE, and Bahrain across different fields. If approved as law, this special envoy position would play a crucial role in encouraging other nations to follow in the footsteps of the United Arab Emirates, Morocco, Bahrain, and normalizing relations with Israel.